Hello and welcome to what is the sixth video in this series on how you're getting started with C Sharp. In this video, I will focus on how you create classes and objects in object oriented programming. So this is going to be the bare bone of what object oriented programming is and how you can use it. But first of all, we need to understand what objects are. So an object could be like a car or a computer or maybe clothes, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical object. It could also be something like feelings, just as long as we can describe it even further. So say like a car could have a model and a color and also the year that it was built. So in that case, the car would be the object and the year and model would be the properties within that object. So it would be some values that we can insert to the object and reference to because we know where we have saved it inside the object. I know it can be a little abstract to understand if it is the first time, but I will show you how it works. So first of all, to structure our project a little bit better, instead of having all the code in one file, I want to show you a good practice on how you store your objects in another folder. And actually you can see the object as a blueprint to an object, but let's go over in the solution explorer and right click the project and we will say add and a new folder and this one we want to call models because by doing that we can keep all our models inside the folder so let's go and right click and say add and say we want to have a new item and what we want to call this item is car and the reason we don't call it cars is because that we just want to make the blueprint to one car and that is because when you have a blueprint you can mass produce from that so in this case our object will be named car or actually it will have a data type called car and then we could put it in a list if we want more of them but let's click on the add and now you can see it create a bunch of code for us right now just to make it simple we can get rid of all the usings and then down and at, at the class here we want to remove the internal so this will be the bare minimum of code that we need to create this class. And the reason we need this namespace is because we need the name of this, you, you could call it space, but all what is inside the namespace here will be our classes. And then we will use this on our program.cs file to reference to this file so that it knows where to look for the car. But you don't have to worry about this so much. What we are going to focus on is what is inside. So we have a class called car and inside that class, we want to add some properties and the properties are basically just, yeah, the information we can store on the car. So let's try to write prop and you can hit tab twice because then it will automatically create the whole property for you. In this case, it create a property called with a data type that is an int and it's called my property. But let's just say that we want to have a year instead. So now we have a full functional property here. And now when we say that it is public, then we're able to use it outside of the car. So on our program.cs file, we can set this value of the year when we create a new instance of this car. And what the last part are doing here, these are called the getters and setters, or just the get and set on the year. And it will just make sure that we can get the value and that we can set the value of the year. So if you just think about it like that, then you should be fine for now. There is some expansion in this you can you can make, but just to keep it simple, I think that is okay for now that you just know that it is a get and a set for the year. So what we can do now is save this file and then go to our program.cs and now we would be able to create a new car. So it's actually a new instance of our object. So a new instance of the car. So we will type car and you can see it automatically put the using of our console app three dot models inside because it knows where the car is. And this is the reason that we have to use the namespace up here. But let's go back and create our car. So we say car and then my car. This is the name of the variable we're going to create or the name of the object it is going to be. And then we can go and set it equal to a new car. And we have to use the parentheses to close this off and the semicolon. So now we have actually created an instance of our car object and we call it for my car. And when we hit the dot, you can see down here, we have the year because this is a property inside our car object. And now because the getters and setters are in the right place, we can go and say equal and then set the year 
to let's say 2023 and just close the line off so let's try and go and write this out in the console so say console dot write line and then we want to print out the year inside my car and close it off so let's run the application and as you can see we get the year up here 2023 but just to practice let's go to the car object again and let's just copy and paste this line so Control d and then we want to specify what model this car can be and that should be a string and remember to save the file so that you can see the changes all over in our program.cs so now we can say my car again and put a dot and so then we can say what model should this be and it should be a ferrari and always remember to close the line off so again in the right line we can go and copy and paste this Control d and then we can go and say it should be display the model on the next line let's see how it looks and now we got get the year and the model of the car so the reason that this is very smart and that object oriented programming have so much power in today's programming is because imagine that you have a database with a table and you want to fetch out let's say 10 cars then you could go and see all these properties as columns in your table and when the things are getting a little more advanced i will show you how we fetch things from a database and we could fetch some cars just like we're doing here and then make a list of all the cars but let's go and try and create a new instance of this car so Control d on this line and we will just call it for my car too and then I want to go and copy and paste these two lines so we don't have to write it all again and put a 2 in front and then say we have a little bit older car and then the model should be let's just say that it is a Toyota so if we save this or if we just say my car number two instead we can go and see that this should now be the other instance of our, our object so now we get displayed the toyota instead of the ferrari so it should be pretty straightforward to add some values to our object but we can do more than that because if we go back to our car we can also specify some methods in here so now I just copy and pasted a method inside here so we have a public method that return nothing that's why we type void and this method is called start engine and it does not take any parameters so this will just execute whatever is inside and really doesn't care if we return anything or how we do it because we are going to void the return and we're not putting something inside the method but the thing this method will do is to write out out in our console that the engine has started so if we save this and go back to our program.cs and let's delete one of these and then inside my car and in this case it really doesn't matter if it's my car one or just the one that had no number or if it's my car two because they both are going to use the same car blueprint that we created so the same car object so they will both have the start engine method so if we click we can now see from this list that we have a start engine and we can hit enter on that and remember the parentheses just like this and now you can see it actually gave me an error because i am doing this wrong right now and that's because we cannot convert a void to a bool it says and this is of course because our method here is going to return void and because this start engine is going to return a console write line then this will also make no sense because then we are running the method inside a write line and that should also call a write line so i'll just take this out so just clip it out and put it right here instead and remember to close it so now our my car 2 object will start the engine so when we run the application again we can now see that the engine has started but let's go back and also create a stop engine so i'll just copy and paste this method and instead of start we will say stop and then the value in the right line should also be engine stop and remember to save the file so when we come back to our program.cs we can say my car to and say stop engine like this so now we just start the engine and we stop the engine so if we run it we can see that we get the values but this is the most fundamental object you can create or the most basic objects that you can create in c sharp but this should be enough for this video i'll hope to see you in the next video bye